Hello and welcome back everyone to Mortal Kombat 9 and Rocket Rabbit Commentaries. And in this episode, we'll be finishing off Nightwolf's story as we go up against Cyrax. There, I finally found uh, Nightwolf's Charge. Mm. Uh, Nightwolf's Charge specifically is a really interesting move as, as, as it's a great gap closer, but it doesn't honestly do all that much damage, and if they block it, you are wide open for a good half second. So, it's not a thing that I would recommend spamming, even though I personally really like spamming it because it has got such a, a nice, satisfying crunch sound. Yes, very crunchy. Especially against a human opponent Zap! whose feelings are very squishy. They might feel bad or humiliated about being shocked by the lightning of thunder from the gods. I've always found it weird that Nightwolf gets a uh, native affinity for lightning uh, in this game. Uh, no, he actually got that in uh, Mortal Kombat 3 too, didn't he? Uh, one of his fatalities um, was uh, the summoning of a thunderstorm. Yeah, that Nightwolf, Nightwolf thematically uh, worships nature. Uh, very and specifically, he, wor uh, he worships the Native American uh, in incarnation of Raiden. Sure. That's um, why uh, why he keeps calling Raiden uh, Haoka because that is, uh, because that is what uh, that is the god the native of, the Native American god that uh, Raiden represents uh, to Nightwolf. Oh yeah, of course. On the subject of lightning, we got the fucking god of lightning. Meanwhile, Cyrax had actually interrupted our throw by putting a grenade behind us. Sneaky bastard. Yeah. It's one of the things that Mortal Kombat 9 does with it, with its trap characters that, although I like, I can't do myself. Screw <laughs> yourself, sir. Huh? He dropped the he dropped his guard right at the end of your combo. Yeah. The fool. Uh, the, uh, the AI does have a tendency of to, of doing that out uh, with uh, with characters <laughs> that have slower dial of combos. Um. Uh, specifically, I want to say that happens a lot with Ermac, because uh, because Ermac has got relatively slow dial of combos. Can I finally <laughs> land the X-ray on an opponent, uh, please? Yay! Slash. Yeah, I was going to say, I know Cyrax can't hear me over the ass kicking he just received, but you really should do a follow-up attack on an opponent that can't move. All right, so who are we fighting next, Mr. Nightwolf? Are we going to fight Sector next? I don't know either. Oh, there, there's the captions for that. You don't want none of this smoke. Whoosh! That hurt my only feeling. It's in my central chassis. Mm. Yes. I understand that you was a bitch, Sector. Pasgurda has some fun. Pasgurda has right. got some sauce. Uh, one, uh, once again, uh, this fight is mostly about uh, uh, is mostly about interrupting and blocking uh, Sector's teleports, and then looping him uh, and then looping him into an uppercut afterwards. Meanwhile, human con human sacrifices are being conducted in the background. And the guy For the record, that does not make sense in story, but uh, I don't think that they actually have the story or rendition of this arena. Uh, av available to draw upon, so. <laughs> I don't remember if we actually had the Sacrificial Altar in Mortal Kombat 3 as an arena. Man, that would have been a good finisher if only he didn't block low. There we go. Nightwolf does, has, uh, does have one of the uh, the uh, the coolest uh, ending flourishes too, where he generates one of the uh, uh, the spirit tomahawks and throws it on the ground. I, I like that flourish. It is a very nice flourish. Yeah, you also you also like the one where he uses the dagger as a lightning rod in order to draw the lightning onto his fallen opponent. Yeah, but that's the end of his throw. And so. there it is again. <laughs> uh, I. I think his back throw does a similar thing, where he uh, where he uh, stabs the knife into them and then throws them over uh, over his back. So does does the fighting games in is it a thing in fighting games outside of Super Smash Brothers to actually have attacks do less damage the more over time the more you repeat them? Hutch. 
A stale moves is definitely a thing that party fighters tend to have, at least I want to say so. However, I do not believe that Mortal Kombat or any other uh, actually competitive quote-unquote fighting game uses stale moves as a mechanic. Hmm. I guess they're forcing the issue that, hey, you really should think of an answer to this because this dude can do this all day long. <laughs> Uh-oh. Please remember that Sindel is under super magic steroids during this scene. Well, yeah, she came back from the dead. Not only did she come back from the dead, she also absorbed Shao Kahn's soul. Not Shao Kahn's soul, but Shang Tsung's soul. Metal. Come forward, if you dare. I will finish what the Ling Kuei could not. And here we have one of the most controversial scenes in the entire goddamn story. Okay, uh, Mr. Cloud, you've not seen this story before, so bets. Who survives this fight? Well, I mean, I already know the answer to that question, unfortunately, because you fucking told me in between parts. Um, I mean, you want to give everybody a chance. But uh, both the music and the uh, continuity of the scene so far suggests that uh, something is going very wrong for our heroes. The uh, single wife female also is a movie where one of the characters, the single wife female, actually uses the heel on her stiletto in order to stab a dude in the neck and causing him to die. Poor Jade. Yeah, yeah, everybody else is dead, so now she's going down, too. Mother, you're alive. Too bad you will die. We'll die. <laughs> I'm glad that you brought up, uh, brought up that reference. I am no longer your because, well, because the, is, it, is this not it, like, from the movie? <laughs> no, this is not from the movie. Shao Kahn has resurrected well, I mean, it was in the movie because it was in the lore. Uh, no, actually. Uh, in, uh, it, it was, it was in the movie very explicitly because it's a badass line. She doesn't deliver it very fucking well, but it is a badass line. Oh, dude, I, I bet you everybody in the fucking theater was laughing at that point, you know? That was a good time to laugh. Because we're about to see some kick-ass action. And meanwhile, Katana is having her soul removed. Be a very yep. sensual soul removal. Monster. Oh, uh, cool. We can actually fight her now. Yes, we finally get to fight Sindel. And this is the last fight um, of Nightwolf's chapter. Oh, well, lucky you, mister. <laughs> I, like, are they gonna are they gonna finish the job back there? Because the dude's been squirming no, on the No, they're altar not gonna the finish the job back there. For ten strictly, minutes. <laughs> it, it, is very, it is very explicitly uh, just a background element. They never <laughs> actually finished sacrificing the dude. And the dude's saying, please kill me. <laughs> oh, 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 right, Sindel is honestly another character that I wish I was really fucking good with because she's honestly got a lot of really interesting and fun uh, things that you can do with her, especially in this game. Like that, like, okay, well. like the enhanced uh, uh, rolling kick. But uh, she's also a character that's kind of defined by her flight mechanics, and flight is just not a thing that works that well in 2D in uh, duty fighters it's very awkward to control for some fucking reason maybe for you or rather it feels awkward it might not actually be awkward but it feels awkward and as such i can't do shit with sindel like the best thing that i can do with sindel is a uh is a combination rolling uh rolling kick into her hair flip and um uh, although that does a, a, a pretty significant amount of damage it uh isn't exactly reliable because uh, your target usually has some pretty significant uh, recovery after rolling kick. So, well, I mean, I'm not a I'm not a video game theorist per se because there is an actual groundwork of theory that supports how video games are created and what makes good games good and bad games bad. Uh, 
So on the subject of aerial mechanics, I'd like to think a simple formula is, is that aerial mechanics provide chaos, and as chaos goes up, optimal strategy on the opposition goes down. Uh, that's opponent. definitely how it's supposed to feel, but it doesn't really work that well in 2D fighters, to be perfectly honest. Because just because she's flying doesn't mean you can't hit her. You if can't hit her, but it, like, what if? But what if you hit the wrong attack? Well, here, well, the the interesting thing about that specifically is that any of your mids will actually be able to hit her while she's nice. flying. We that did manage to barely HP. beat Sindel. That was negative HP. Now Sindel faced the spirit's judgment. <laughs> I got my health back. Raiden. Raiden. Where are you? Okay, yeah, so Sonya um, actually manages to uh, actually manages to survive. The two characters that survive Sindel's onslaught are Sonya and Johnny Cage. So what happened because uh, is we've come full circle now that Raiden's prediction of Shao Kahn, you know, single-handedly defeating everybody else in the game has come true, except that Sindel was the one, not Shao Kahn, and that her onslaught did not kill everybody. What? He invades Earthrealm as we speak. Invasion is not itself a transgression. It is the merger of... I like Raiden's uh, counter-argument here. A distinction without a difference. Innocents are dying at the hands of Outworld. Yeah, the Elder Gods are fucking useless, okay? This is the only game that the Elder Gods actually managed to success successfully do anything, and even here, they wait until the very end of the fucking game to do something. Balance among the realms, huh? So, the worst of the realms has got to get better, and the best of the realms has got to get worse. <laughs> the Elder Gods... They've been reading the wrong scripts. <laughs> yes, as Pascard had mentioned, now everything everything has fallen apart. Air attack. Honestly, I wish that they would actually have done more with uh, uh with this uh, uh for Sindel story. Like, like I kind of wish that Sindel got more fights, cause this is the only fight that she gets in the game. God, zooks! So yeah, in order to take down Sindel, Nightwolf had to send a sp had to send a spiritual nuke at her. Katana. Liu Kang. You were right. I See, I know I'm supposed to feel something here. I just I. I just don't think this I've... scene is specifically <laughs> here for the people that used to ship uh, Leo King and Katana. And for the record, that ship is still definitely intact uh, in the current timeline. <laughs> it's just we don't get to see we don't get to see it all that much. They are dead. Luke, we abandoned them, and they're dead. Mm. My heart too is heavy with their sacrifice. Their deaths achieve nothing. Nothing. <sighs> and Liu King is right here. What is next, Raiden? Tell me the future. How do we honor their sacrifice? I climbed to heaven. Now I must plunge into the depths. I don't understand why Raiden thinks this will work. He has seen Quan Chi working with Shang, uh, working with uh, Shao Kahn. What will he demand? What price will be paid? Would any price be too high to save Earthrealm? Actually, yes. There are several prices too high to save Earthrealm. I had prayed it not. If only I was not one of the earliest chapters in the game, I would engage in mortal combat with Quan Chi. No, we've not played a, a, a chapter with Raiden yet, and it's explicitly because we're going to play with Raiden for the rest of the game. Uh, hey, stay dead over there. 
I'm getting better. Shut up. <laughs> You're dead. <laughs> I do like that uh, Liu King and Raiden still have this falling out, to be perfectly honest. Mm. And so we come to the final chapter. Chapter 16. Raiden. Hey, hey, hey. hey Scorpion. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I will have an audience with Quan Chi. You may address me. I will inform him. Huh. I've heard that one before. You're not getting my 20 bucks today, mister. And in the next episode, we will fight Scorpion. Be safe, everybody.